Hi, welcome to another video. Most of you would remember Mini Max M2 because it was actually quite a good model. It wasn't as great on the general questions, but it really aced the agentic tests because it was made just for that. However, it is now getting a new version bump to version 2.1 that fixes many quirks of the model and makes it even better. People at Minimax were kind enough to reach out to me and give me early access to this model to run my benchmarks and share my review of it. I have been using it for the past two to three days now and have run all my benchmarks, and I have quite good thoughts on the model. I have also been testing another model, which is also upcoming in probably the next week as well, which is also going to be openly available when it comes out, and that is also a version bump. I can't share more details about it for now, but it's also great. Anyway, currently, this model is not available generally. It should be generally available by tomorrow, or the day after, from what I have got to know about it. It would probably sit at the same extremely affordable price of $1.20 per million out and $0.30 cents per million in. This makes it about two times cheaper than Gemini Flash on paper alone. But now, let's look at my benchmarks to understand the performance that you are getting here. First, let's start with the non-agentic benchmarks. But before we do that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. With the new year around the corner, it's the perfect time to set new goals and build habits that last. And Brilliant, today's sponsor, is an amazing way to improve your skills and challenge yourself. It turns anyone into a genius and helps you finally click with concepts you used to struggle with. Most people are already capable. They just need the right tools to unlock their full potential, and Brilliant does that perfectly. It's super adapted to you and your needs. Brilliant meets you at your level, gives personalized practice and reviews, and helps you advance at your own pace. You get hands-on with problems until they make sense. So you're not just memorizing formulas, you're building intuition and becoming a better problem solver. Recently, they expanded their content library massively from algebra, calculus, and computer science, to AI, quantum topics, and beyond, there's something to challenge everyone. Each course and problem is crafted by experts from MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Caltech, and Google, so you know you're learning from the best. To try Brilliant for free, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description, and my viewers get 20% off an annual premium subscription, giving you unlimited daily access to all of Brilliant's interactive courses. Start solving problems that once felt impossible possible. In the non-agentic benchmarks, it does some good wonders. To start, you have the floor plan. And, well, this isn't really great. The plan made here works, but it doesn't really make sense as to what it is trying to do here. After this, we have the SVG of the panda holding a burger, and it is kind of fine. The stomach should have had maybe a stroke to bifurcate it from the background, but I won't complain. It looks kind of fine, but obviously not the best by any means. The Pokeball in 3Js is, however, a 20 out of 20. This is actually insane. It's perfectly made, and I can't really ask for anything else from it. The dimensions are to the point and very slick. After this, we've got the chessboard with autoplay feature, and it doesn't really work. I tried it multiple times, but it doesn't want to work, so this is a fail. Then we've got the Minecraft clone using 3.js, and, well, it really nails it. It follows the Kandinsky style that I asked it to make it in, and it really works, which is insane. The gravity and everything is quite correct. Then we got the majestic butterfly flying in the garden. It really nails this part. You can see the butterfly looks good. If you look closely, then there are eyes as well. The wings also coordinate correctly. The CLI tool in Rust is also great, but the Pokeball in Blender script is a major downer. It also doesn't pass the maths questions apart from the riddle. So this makes it score the 12th position on the leaderboard, which, just for context, is above GLM 4.6 and basically the same as 4.1 Opus which was a really expensive big model. And this is a super small 
and super fast model. Gemini 3.0 flash preview scores 47%, while this scores 53%. And this is an amazing win here. It is way cheaper than flash for better performance. But this is just textual benchmarks. Let's have a look at the agentic benchmarks as well. Let's start with the Go to UI calculator, and, well, it kind of nails it. It works well. It looks really good. It did all the stuff in literally one shot. Also, I'm using it with Claude Code here for now, as that's the option that I could currently use. You should also be able to test it out in things like Kilo Code, which should be the launch partner. And they also support interleaved thinking in the extension. So that should be something that I'll try this most on. But for now, I had used Claude Code. So this is good. Now the next question is to ask it to make me a movie tracker app with Expo. And it kind of does well in this. The home page, search, and everything works. But the inner pages, when you click on them, don't really work. But overall it's a solid one-shot generation considering the size and cost. Then we've got the Godo game, and it also works really very well. It is good to see that more and more models are getting support for Godo, as I really like when a model can code well in different stuff. Anyway, that is awesome. After this, we've got the Tari app, and well, it doesn't work, which is fine because most of the models, even Sonnet, are not really good at this. Only Opus and Gemini 3 Pro work with it to some extent. After that, we've got the Nuxt app, and that also doesn't really work. Then we've got the Open Code repo, and, well, it kind of works in this, but the functionality doesn't work. Only the design works. This makes it score the eighth position, which is over the Gemini Flash with anti gravity. I really prefer this model for most agentic tasks over Gemini 3 Flash. It is much cheaper, relatively faster. It can do some really cool stuff if you prompt it right or combine it with something like Opus. And it is considerably cheaper. If you get a decent AI server, then you could even run it locally, which is insane. This is a really good model. It is going to be open weights, affordable, really good on agentic tasks, especially AI coding, which is really great to see. That is majorly about it. I had gotten early access, and I was allowed to share my thoughts. That's why this video is here. Thanks a lot to the team at Minimax for the access, and to you guys for keeping supporting the channel like you guys always have. There's another model that I'm testing, which should also be out next week, and it's even more insane. It's number three on my non-agentic benchmarks, and it's open, so stay tuned for that. That is majorly about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.